I'm Bill Tate with Lenore and Caldwell County History on Facebook. Come join us at Shields. Today I'm with the Rockard family and we're at Shields down on Penton Avenue. We're going to discuss the history of the old Lenore Hardware and Furniture Company and also Shields when it was uptown in uptown Lenore. And you can't beat the Rockard family. They are Christian and this is a wonderful store. If you've never been here, Please come. I'm a customer and I love it. Well, Gwen, tell us about the early days from the time you graduated high school from that time on forward, if you will. Okay, I graduated in high school in 1951, and that's uh, when I became involved uh, to work for Shields. I mean, I'm sorry, for Leno Hardware. And uh, of course, um, I had been in uh, the National Guard during that particular time. I, I was in the National Guard for four years. Uh, and in 1951, Rachel and I um, was married. And uh, um, uh, we came, uh, came to Lenore Hardware. Mr. Lenore, Mr. Walter Lenore uh, was my employer. He's the one that hired me. When I came, um, his father, Mr. Walter Lenore Sr., he used to be the mayor of Lenore, and I would, um, of mornings, he would be there, and the lunchtime I would take him home. He lived upon North Main Street. Um, Mr. Walter Lenore Jr. was, they were real nice people. If you've ever seen the uh, picture of a hardware store where they have the a coal heater and people sitting around just talking, that was the way it was. Mm -hmm. Mr. Lenore, um, Mr. Sam Tuttle, and Mr. Self. They would uh, sit around and they would talk. And he told me, you know what to do uh, when I first come. I, I would go up a morning, I'd sweep the place out, and I would put, maybe put a few things out front. And we didn't have any locks on them. We just set them out there. No one would ever steal anything. And then uh, I would go down and uh, they in the furnace room, they had this uh, cold bin and it was so high, I'd have to get up something and get up there and I would shovel the coal. It would be small pebbles of coal and I'd fill that hopper up. And then they'd have this worm gear. It would go slowly. It would take the coal into the, um, into the furnace and uh, I would do that every morning, and uh, that would heat the um, the building, and it also heat upstairs. And the upstairs, you had Judge Crisp, he was there, and you also had Dr. Dennis Cook, he had a dentistry there. In fact, he worked on my teeth a few times. Mm -hmm. So um, this would heat the entire building, if it ever was heated. Um, <laughs> but at any rate, <laughs> I worked for Mr. Lenore, and you know, they treated me just like I was their son. They were wonderful to me. Um, I would, um, I started selling deep freeze appliances, uh, deep, deep freeze freezers, refrigerators, and so forth. And um, we had, so Dexter washing machines. I was the only one there. Mm -hmm. Them guys, they sit around and talk. And we, we had Mr. Kincaid, he was a real elder man. And you know, he couldn't really hardly walk very good, but he'd been there, he was just a great guy. Mm -hmm. We had um, Mrs. Oscar Miller, she was the bookkeeper. If you've ever been in that building, they, we call it a crow's, let, crow's nest, you, you climb the stairs up there. And every morning we go up there and they got a great big vault. You can walk in that thing and we would get the accounts and bring them down the stairs into the office. And uh, we had a cash register. We have the same cash register here uh, as we had. And that was the, this cash register that we have here is the one I used for the first job I had. Every employee had, had a drawer. My drawer was number two. And um, this cash register still works. Uh, we don't, we, of course, we don't use it as such, but it does work. Um, we also have the same nail, uh, way nails. It's a Fairbanks uh, is the name of it. And they come in here from North Carolina, they check that thing, they go back there and they get their instruments, and it's perfect. They tell me, hey, will you give us a ticket, it's perfect. So, you know, it, there was that Lono Hardware. 
Uh, we use that now. That's the only one we use is we weigh nails. Uh, that particular time, we, uh, we sold, you know, horse collars and we had um, uh, horseshoes. Um, you, you got the old freight elevator and we <laughs> take customers up, we take freight up. Mm -hmm. And on the second floor, we had um, some furniture and we had Kingstown mattresses. We still sell them today. Uh, we didn't have many, but the salesmen come in there and we buy them along and, and sold them. Up on the third floor, uh, we had excess stock and we had coal planters and uh, things like that. Little room up there, uh, that's where they had the, uh, they tell me they sold coffins and maybe done some embalming. They did. And everybody was skittish about that room. Nobody <laughs> wanted to go in that room. I was that's skittish. Right. And, <laughs> And so, you know, but we did. We had we had um, we had some excellent employees. Well, at Shields, but at that time, uh, I was the only one that I quitted there. We had Mr. Kincaid. He he, you know, he didn't really do much, and had these other guys. They sit around at the stove. <laughs> they talked, and so um, I was the only one that. Um, of course, we had Alan Poe. Alan Poe was there. And he and Ms. Miller would stay up there in the crow's nest. They could do the book work. They had this, they had the great big book. They would, uh, I can, I can see her now. So you told me something I didn't know. I didn't know Alan Poe actually worked there. At one he time. did. He was there, and he stayed up there 90 percent of the time. And um, I was, uh, I would sell these Dexter washing machines, and I'd take them out myself. I put them in the truck, and I would deliver them myself. There was no one else there to do it. And I have taken refrigerators. I would take a refrigerator and lay it down on the back on a blanket and pull it off, and I've delivered them myself. But then I started selling uh, linoleum, you know, tile, and I, I said, we need some more help. So we, they got, we got another one. We got Roy Coffee to come in. And then we sales increased some, and we had to have a little more help. So we got uh, R.A.N. as he come. So we had two other at that particular time. And so um, this was, I, I was there really for t two years. Uh, we from uh, 51, so I was in the Army. I had to go to the Army in 54 um, and 55. <laughs> so um, anyhow, I told Mr. Lenore, I said, you know, I said, we need another truck. We, we had pretty good business then. He says, well, says, uh, just take my Oldsmobile. <laughs> he, he used to, they used to over there where Shaw Furniture was. Uh, he tells me he had uh, an interest uh, in selling automobile dealership over there over the corner where they used to be, Shaw Furniture. So he had hit one of those Oldsmobiles that was in that dealership. So, you know, we had the truck, one would take the truck and we took his Oldsmobile <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> when, uh let, let's go back just a little bit. Tell me again the original store on Mulberry. Tell me again who owned that and a little bit about that one. Then we'll go back to the uptown, the other store on West. Okay, Mulberry, the uh, Shields started out with Paul Shields. It was more of a appliance repair store. I don't think he sold any appliances, but uh, at that particular time, I'm not sure how many years he'd been there, but uh, Jim Justice. George Riker and Mr. Hogan, uh, they um, they bought they bought that out, and then they started selling appliances, and they tried. They asked me to come. In fact, they asked me to come to work for them, and um, the uh, and Lawrence Hayes over at Shaw Furniture. The, he asked me to come work for them, and Bernhard Seagulls, Mr. Bernhard, asked me to come over there one day, and they wanted me to come to work for them. But I tell you, Mr. Lenore, they was treated me so good. I, I would not leave them. I knew I was going to have to go into the Army anyhow. And so uh, he started out as an appliance repair. And his wife used to come in here while we were down here. And she would come in and says, I, I think she lived up north someplace. I wanted to see the store that my husband started. So um, at any rate, um, they were, the Lenores were, were great to me, and Mrs. Miller, and uh, they were great people. They was, they had never said one cross word to me. But one day, 
I got this letter in the mail. Rachel and I had been married, and we was getting along good, really good. Everything is hunky-dory. And we'd built this house. We didn't have any furniture in it much, but we had a house. And we would go over to uh, Morganton to get this hot fudge Sunday, And, um, <laughs> you know, but I was working at Lono Hardware. Everything was working good. I would drive the hardware truck home in the afternoons. And I got this letter, and they said they wanted me in the Army. And, th and uh, they didn't ask me if I would like to come. They told me to report. So at that particular time, I had to leave Lono Hardware. But to make a long story short, they were great to me. They treated me like their son. I would never leave them. And that's the reason I did not leave them. I went into the Army, uh, 54 and 55. I'd been in the National Guard for four years. I had to build eight years some way, they told me. And so I was in the Army, and I was going overseas and come back. and. Uh, <clears throat> I went to work for Shields. You had um, George Rackard, Jim Justice, and Terrell Rhodes. Well, George was was not active at that time. George had gone. He was flying on airplane for Broyles. So uh, I told him I'd been there. I worked there. I come back from the Army, and I worked there a couple of years. And I told him one day, he says, you know, says, I'm going to go to school. I'd, I'd already um, had a place in Charlotte. I was going to uh, Queens College. Mm -hmm. And I already had a place to stay, and they was, everything was ready for me to go. I says, I'm leaving. And a couple of days, they come and asked me if I would go in with them. And uh, I don't know, you know. And they made it. I, I, at eight or eight, I ended up buying George Reichert's part. George and I, <clears throat> I paid him a loan, and finally one day I didn't get him paid. So it was then it was George, George, I mean, uh, Jim Justice, Terrell Rhodes, and myself. They were the three. And we were selling uh, air conditioning and furniture and uh, hardware. About what year would this have been? Uh, well, this would have been a 50. Uh, Fifty-six, fifty-six. That's when I went to work. On and it. one question: About what year was it when Shields made the transition from Mulberry Street to West Avenue? It was while I was in the army. Okay. When I left, it was Lono Hardware. When I came back two years later, Shields had uh, bought Lono Hardware out. Okay. okay. So I guess it'd been around uh, fifty-four, something like that. Something I guess. Like that. Mm -hmm. but, Anyhow, um, we had we had um, good. We had Lori Miller and Earl Shell, and those guys were great uh, employees. Um, they were great servicemen. But they were the best. And that was going to be my next question. Let me tell you who I remember, and then I want you to add to it. You, of course, Earl Shell, Boyd Tauber, Matt McCoy, Terrell Rhodes, Jim Justice. And a Mrs. Smith, I believe she was Cotton Smith's wife, yeah, right. mm -hmm. that ran the register. Mm -hmm. Yes, she did. Right. And then that's about all I remember. Now, I know there were a few other employees. In fact, when I remember when I would come in through the back door, there was a little, I guess it was a little radio shop where you fix TVs and radios. Am that's I correct right. on that's that? That's correct. We're, Little place on the left there that we uh, did repair. We we sold RCA radios RCA. and TVs. Mm -hmm. In fact, we were a, a master dealer of those. Um, and I've mentioned this before. In fact, you'll hear it again in this video the, when it's all completed. But I remember one of the first microwaves in Lenore was the Amana Radar wow. Ranch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was in there one day. I was about ten years old, and Terrell had one of these fluorescent tubes. And he stuck it in the microwave and turned it on, and it lit up. And, of course, being a child, I, that just amazed me. <laughs> but Shields, and, and still is, was a very upscale store. Terrell and Jim always kept the latest toys, the latest appliances. The, the newest could be found at Shields. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were um, partners and got along excellent. But to my knowledge, we never had... We had not one disruption, no, no problems at all. We, it, it was a good partnership.
Can you add to those employees that I just mentioned? Can you, can you yeah, add some more? Charlie Holman. Yeah, we had Charlie had Holman. Charlie. had been there for many, many years. We had a tin shop uh, down... Um, if you remember where Carolina Feed and Seed was, it was oh. right beside of them before you yeah. get to Lenore um, Building Supply. We had a tin shop and we had uh, Roy Woodring and we had uh, several, in fact, we had my son, Terry, Terry Rockard. That's right. Uh, he, enjoyed, he enjoyed working outside. To do, doing all the duck work, is that what the he did, sheet Yeah, he made, duck. He, he made duck work. Right. And they went in and installed it and uh, then we had a plumbing crew. We had Mr. Richards, Ben Richards, and he was there for many, many years. And uh, our son Terry, he did both. He worked. He helped them, and he also helped in the um, <clears throat> in the plumbing. Anything that had to do with outside, he loved. When it, when we came in here, he couldn't take that. <laughs> but John he, he Handy didn't. Too. He didn't like to work inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did uh, the um, we did a lot of the um, heating and air conditioning in, in the plants. In fact, um, they built, uh, Bernard's, I believe, they built a, a new plant entrapment, and we did all of that. That's we right, we I built a new that. truck and did all mm -hmm. of the heat and air conditioning. And here's another question for you. A lot of people would like to know, and I have just guessed, when did Shields become air conditioned? Was it around 1954, 5, in that time frame? Uh, well, when I came back out of the Army, they were involved in it. But we became more involved as time went on. Um, you mean when the building was air conditioned? When the building was air conditioned? Mm -hmm. Oh, when we. When, when you had air conditioning in the building? In the uh, well, we. Uh, Did they have air conditioning? Yeah. I think. You can't turn back, it we had, we had a tall unit, <laughs> just one tall unit, uh, mm -hmm. and it did it. I mean, it didn't do a good job, but it. it, it Again, about what year do you think? 54 or 5? 56 probably. I think, yeah. it was there. I think it was there around 56. <clears throat> I remember when I was a child, before air conditioning, all the businesses uptown would leave their doors open. They had to, oh, yeah. of course they had ceiling fans. Mm -hmm. And I'd, I was trying to guess when Lenore Drug went to air conditioning and, and they had a, they remodeled and I believe they must have done it about 55. Mm-hmm. Well, we uh, we was we we had the air conditioning um, uh, technicians to come, and they were setting draw plans out. And we didn't we did a, we were heavy in heating and air conditioning, and also in service work. We had the ones you mentioned, you know, like Earl Shell, Laura Miller, and the Boyd Talbert. Uh, they, they, we stayed busy. Um, then I was there um, after a period of time, and. Um, Terrell kind of got, he got sick, Terrell did, and he had to, uh, at that particular time they, we had to do something, they had to, uh, do, and I think Jim just got tired. Yeah, he wanted to fish. He, he got, <laughs> Jim got tired, and um, Terrell got sick, and they kind of made it uh, their business that I would purchase the business. And um, I did. Um, we've. I guess that was. I, we came down here in um, 70, 78. 78. That's when we moved from up there down. The problem we had up there is was parking, and the transfer trucks would come, and the police would get after them, and my customers would get parking tickets, and I, I made my mind up quick. I was going to move because I was having trouble with my with that. But it ended with this. We moved here, and um, this, I think we've had a good business. We've had good employees, and, uh, you know, we've had a good customer base, and we've enjoyed the business. Now, I've noticed when I went through there with the owner, Donnell Clark, she owns that and Lenore Drug right now. And I've toured both buildings. But I noticed that there's gas uh, heat in there now, of course, hung from the ceiling, the gas heaters. Do you have any idea when they went to that? Well, when I left, when I left to go in the Army, it was coal. When I came back, it was gas. Okay. So I guess, uh, you know, uh, Jim and Terrell and these guys, they didn't want to get out and mess with the coal. 
<laughs> so see, I was totally wrong about the usage of that furnace. It was used on up in the 50s. And I was totally wrong yeah. about that, which I don't mind being totally wrong. I'm learning too, you yeah. know. Uh, I was going to ask you about that freight elevator. Uh, Donnell, the owner, did not know when that freight elevator was built. It was an original with the building that was built in 1907, but it was installed sometime later. Do you know? I don't. Okay, it was there when you when I came, came. when I came there in 1951. It was it was there. Okay, and it still works. By the way, I took yeah. a ride on it. <laughs> did you? I sure did. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Yeah, it's still still passing inspection. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so is the old Belks elevator in Belks too. It still works. Mm -hmm. But uh, trying to find a photo of Alan Poe because he is such a great historian. And he spent his last days in that building. I guess you knew that. He did. Upstairs. He, he did. Mm -hmm. And But he was such a recluse, I can't find any photos, or at least I haven't yet. But uh, I'm glad you mentioned him, because I was going to mention him. And we've covered the employees. Well, uh, Mr., we have Mrs. Poe, you know. Uh, Mrs. Poe was the city manager. Jean Poe. So mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Do Mr. Lenore had um, Walter Lenore, Jr., and he had uh, Mrs. Poe, and he had Bab Lenore. He was the other okay. uh, son. Bab Lenore was not involved with the Lona Hardware. Um, but Mrs. Poe would come down, she would come up there, and she would um, want to change the windows. And everybody dreaded to have to change those windows. <laughs> but uh, she she was good at it. And the... Uh, those were the good days. I got to know the Poes because my best friend lived right beside them. And of course I grew up on Norwood Street and they had a house on Norwood Street, so I got to know them pretty well. But uh, can you think of anything else we can add to this? And Sheila, do you want to say something? Is Wynn leaving anything yeah. out? Uh, John Hamby. Uh, well, I John well, they did forget yeah. John Hamby. He, yeah. he was there for, gee whiz, I don't know, 20 years, I guess. Yeah, more than that. And John again, Hamby. Gwen, you may have already mentioned it, but your main thing was air conditioning. Am I correct on that? You, is that Me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, had, um, I, was in, I was involved in everything. Okay. Uh, at that particular time, I, I was involved in sales of furniture uh, and, um, and appliances. Building. Yeah, yeah. I, we, we got involved in uh, home repair, building bathrooms, and I, I, I sold, I got started in uh, selling, uh, installing plumbing bathrooms. Okay. And so um, I got Mr. Eldridge Cannon did that. And then I got Bun Richards. He was um, a license, he was a plumber, and I would get, get him on subcontract. And I'd go out there and um, I'd go out to his place. I'd tell him what we need. And one day I went out there and he says, I want to come to work for you. Well, I, I didn't exactly like that because that kind of puts me um, responsible for keeping them busy. They, he they had three, three fellas. So I started selling plumbing and then I, I sold pretty good and then it ended up we needed another set of plumbers. So we had two crews of plumbers. <laughs> and so I would sell, I was involved in that, and we did a lot of um, work in Morganton. Mm -hmm. And um, I sold, I was involved in all, all of aspects of that. I would sell furnaces. Mm -hmm. I'd sell furnaces over there and I would figure it. Uh, we would, um, in fact, we had three builders over there and they would build these um, in their developments mm -hmm. and, and, and we did the work. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> we did the heating and air conditioning and also the plumbing. Um, the, uh, we had those, uh, we had, in fact we had, um, we, it was pretty tight, financially it's pretty tight. Right. And I, they come to me one day and they said, well, we owe the bank, or maybe the bank owned us, I don't know. We, we had bought the, the um, uh, Hogan, we had bought the, that part, and so we went, Jim Terrell and I, we went to the bank over there and 
First Union National Bank. Joe Steele was the president. And we borrowed the money and paid the Hogan estate. We paid them off. And they come to me one day and says, we, we don't have enough money to make payroll, you know. <laughs> and, well, they tell me because I had a lot of money out on the contracts. And I would go, but you know, uh, I would I would drive up, but I never did ask any one of my builders for money. When I would walk up, when I would drive up, I guess they just figured I needed some, and they gave it to me. But uh, we 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 had always paid our bills promptly, always had, and uh, but it got pretty tight at times. And so I had, I, I borrowed the money whenever I bought into it. And I, when I, George Riker, I had to pay him on time. And when these other guys, I paid them, I had to pay the banker there. So, you know, it's, it's, it's been an experience, but it's been a good experience. I, I enjoy dealing with the customers that we've had. Um, I was 10 years old in 53 when I used to go and shield so much. Probably younger than that, but... I remember when you walked in the front door, I was gun crazy at the time, and there were guns, a gun rack mm -hmm. over on the left front mm -hmm. wall. And best I remember, you had several display tables, I would call them, going from the front to the rear, and they had tools, and I believe some plumbing fittings and that kind of thing. Could you, could you describe the inside of the store for us? Well, when I first went there, um, they didn't have plumbing, period. Uh, they it was mainly um, where we sold the furniture, some furniture on the second floor, and and and, and the front on the uh, up there we had a few, you know, housewares, and we had a um, a counter there, and we roll out window shades and things like that. Uh, we sold curfews, paint. Um, then toward the back, we we sold the um, had appliances like deep freeze appliances. Uh, they didn't sell that, I don't think much. It seemed like they started selling that when I got there, I, th I, I guess. Um, then <clears throat> we did some repair work. Um, like you said, we had Woodrow Turnmeyer. He was our technician for repair of appliances. I mean, I'm sorry, for TVs and radios and things like that. Is that Turnmeyer? Woodrow Turnmeyer. Okay, I was thinking of Woodrow Clatterbuck, but not... Clatterbuck was a GE. He was at home electric. Right. You got that right. Okay, okay. he stayed with us. Woodrow stayed with <coughs> us probably for over 20 years. He's good, really good. And sometimes I would go have to go out with him and uh, whenever, like put up antennas and things. He come in one morning and says, you know, I says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to quit. He says, this is getting so complex if I keep up with it, I'm gonna have to go to school all the time. <laughs> so uh, he um, he didn't quit and go somewhere else. He just retired. He was a, an excellent technician, and he was up on a house up here. Um, I, I sold this TV, and he, we put up a lot of antennas those days. Mm -hmm. And he's up on that tin roof, and he slid off, Ooh. but he he landed on his feet and didn't get hurt. Didn't get hurt. That's amazing. Um, up on the uh, third floor, some we did, Mr. Uh, listen, we had another technician, I've forgotten his name. Um, but at any rate, they did some on the on the uh, appliances that would take, uh, would have to work on compressors and things, they would do up on the third floor in the little, on the room where they had the embalming. Um, but uh, basically it was, it was kind of plain Jane when, when I first went there. Right. It was really, uh, there wasn't a whole lot going on, um, but it was just an old timey hardware store. Now when I was a little boy, playing in the back alley. In fact, I'll, I'll cut this out because I've already mentioned it, but Rosalie Fox, do you remember Rosalie? I do, he was over there at the drugstore. Yeah, Rosalie taught me how to shoot a 22 rifle behind Lenore Drug. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we'd shoot rats underneath that dumpster. <laughs> and like I tell everybody, and I've said it previously in the whole video, 
Try doing that today. Nobody got excited. Nobody cared, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'd go over to Shields and Lenore Hardware before then, buy a box of 22 shorts for like 35, 40 cents, go around back of Lenore Drug, shoot rats, have a ball. <laughs> and, and one other thing, and I'll cut this out too because mm -hmm. I've already told it, but uh, I don't know if it's a funny story or not. It wasn't too funny then, I'm sure, but J.C. that used to work at Lenore Drug. Now, I don't remember J.C.'s last name. Do you remember J.C., Gwen? I don't think so. He was wild. He was wild. J.C., a lot of times I'd ride with J.C. to del deliver the packages at Lenore Drug, you know, for Lenore Drug. We'd go up into Friedman, and there was a couple of places there where J.C. could stop and get a 50-cent shot of white liquor. <laughs> but he never got fired. He must have been a pretty good worker. But anyway, when I was 10, we had a 46 Ford, I believe it was a coupe. And I was car crazy, gun crazy, car crazy. I wanted to learn how to drive, and J.C. was going to teach me. So J.C. was teaching me how to drive in the back alley. And I hit the back of Shields' truck. Did you know that? No. Did you ever know who did it? No. I'm going to leave this in. It's too good. <laughs> Your response is too good. I've got to leave this in. <laughs> Well, the way I figured, J.C. took the blame, and of course J.C. would have to take the blame because if he told my dad that I was driving that Ford, he would have been fired. Yeah. So he told my dad that he did it, <laughs> and I can remember that like it was yesterday. It did a couple of hundred dollars damage to the back of that Shields truck, wow. but that's just one funny story I had yeah. to tell. <laughs> so now you know. <laughs> After what, 50 years or so? Well, <clears throat> we, put a, uh, we put that fence up there, you know, uh, for security purposes, and someone broke into the back, back of our store. And um, in fact, uh, we went in and we found them back there in the back. There's, we used to have we we sold a tennis shoes, a yeah. kind of a famous brand Converse. tennis shoes. Converse, Converse shoes. Mm -hmm. Converse. That's what it was. Converse. And we went, we went in there, and I guess I'm not sure how we. It was at night, and then boys was found back there. And um, the um, the mamas really got upset about that because they thought we was going to, you know take them to court or whatever, but at any rate, this boy says, you know, I says, uh, I wouldn't even have anything in your store. That's what they studied, you know. They was trying to get out of it. Uh, there's another time they broke in and um, there's, they hid in the back alley. Mm -hmm. And the police was there and we, everybody had just given up. And my son Terry, he come down and he just happened to see him We're back in the, in the back alley. But he didn't. We, that's the reason we put the fence up. So mm -hmm. um, normally in those days we didn't have that much trouble. That was two instances we didn't. Well, I don't ever remember Lenore Drug ever being broken mm -hmm. into. But another thing I wanted to ask you about, when I was a child, that I called it a moat behind the building. It was covered completely with wood back yeah, right. then. Yeah, now it's right. only partially covered. Yeah. Was that just for the runoff from the lot that tapered down to the building? Is that what that was for? Well, um, it's. I guess it was. I guess it's just a drain for the whole back lot area. I suppose. Okay. That's what I guessed. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know. Any other funny stories you'd like to add to this? Can you think of any? What? Yeah. Well. When I first went there, when I first went there, the first sale I ever made was a refrigerator. And this fellow, I, I said, you just take this refrigerator. I was so, uh, I just wanted to sell so bad. <laughs> I said, you take this refrigerator and try it out. If you like it, then you, you, you can pay me for it. But he took that refrigerator and pawned it. <laughs> oh. And um, the Lenores, you know, they didn't, they didn't, get, they didn't get mad. They just went and bought it from the pawn shop. And they never said a word to me about it. Is that right? <laughs> like I said, they were really good to me. And that's the reason I didn't leave them. <laughs>
Sheila, would you like to add something? Do you really, have any memories as a child you'd like to talk about? Well, no, I didn't go in the store a whole lot when I was real small. And, uh, but when I was 18 is when I started working, about 17, 18 when I started. Well, mm -hmm. I guess 17 when I was in the summers. I worked uh, first time helping do inventory. And I was just so shy, and I, I worked with Terrell Rhodes first time, and I was scared to death of him <laughs> for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, I always enjoyed going up on the second or third floor. Dad would lock the doors at Christmas time when the parade would come through, and we'd get to sit in the window and watch the parade. And that's what I did at Lenore Drug from mm -hmm. the second floor window, and I did that for years with my mother. Yeah. And I just did it again. And yeah. that was a real treat to be able oh, to do it right, yeah, with yeah. my grandkids. With your grandkids. That, that would be something. When and Ronald Sheila, Reagan came to town, we sat up there right. too. Watched. And Sheila would come during Christmas time, and this was when she was younger. And they had a great big old long table where they'd roll off paper and wrap gifts. Oh, we had a big so, toy. So Sheila did toys. that for her dad. He'd, he'd let her mm -hmm. come over here, you know, and you remember that. Oh, yeah. Don't you? Yeah, I love that. She did that. a lot of wrapping for people, mm -hmm. you know, free. <laughs> that was fun. Mm. First thing I ever sold was a slingshot out of the sporting goods, so that was my big sale. <laughs> yeah. And he worked mm. three of my sisters, and then he asked, he said, have you got any more? <laughs> yeah. Well, she's much to stay at home mm. with her children yeah. until, um, uh, what did he was, I was 56, about well, when I came over. Yeah. At any rate, when they went to school and she's there by herself and she's kind of lonely, I said, just come and help me. And she's helped me ever since. Mm -hmm. And she had three sisters. And she told me one day she didn't have any more sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, here's something else we need to mention. Mm -hmm. uh, what year did you make the move from uptown to down here? Of course, people know, most people know, this was the old Thrift Food Center, and I was in here many That's times right. as a child with mm -hmm. my mother That's when right. Jimmy O'Dell ran it. But tell me how you made the move down here and when. That was 78. 78. We came here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there was some, this place was in bad, bad shape, real bad. And um, I, I would determine I was going to move. I didn't care where I was going to move. I made my mind up, and someone told me about this, and... Uh, I'd, I'd looked at some other places, um, but um, we came in here and... You only had half of the building. Yeah, we had the half yeah, of the building. We had, had this half, half of the building. Because that, that was a car place. Yeah, it was a car some repair kind of or something. Shop. Clyde Curtis, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. yeah. And uh, shop. we came down here, and of course I had some trailer shares uh, for storage. That's where we kept our mattresses. And this belonged to the Waldensians, and they gave us a hard time about parking. <laughs> we didn't have any parking over there. And so uh, we had, didn't have any parking up there, and come down here, we had a parking problem. And my customers would park over here, and, and they, would, they didn't like that a bit. They'd let us know. We had a sale one time, and the place was filled. Cars was over here, and they called the police. Is that right? <laughs> and the police come in, and you know, police is nice. They just come in and say, well, then people called us. You know? <laughs> and uh, at any rate, um, I think Rachel just prayed about it. She says, Lord says, uh, give us some parking places if it's going to be on top of the building. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, I didn't ask to buy that. They just come and offered, not the wall in since they didn't own it. The people that owned it come and asked me one time, and I, I bought it, and they ended up lending for me. Mm -hmm. But I never did give them a, say anything to them about their parking. You know, I don't know if I ever told you all this, but my grandfather <coughs> used to have a general store right here where your parking lot is. Did you know that? Oh. And I'm named after him. He was William Wallace Tate, the first. Wait. And I'm the second. But yeah, going back into the 30s, he had a general store right where your parking lot is. Hmm. How about that? I didn't know yeah. that either. In the thirties. And Willard Benfield, that used to be manager here, and mm -hmm. like I say, and Jimmy O'Dell, I mm -hmm. think owned it. Willard, I think, was part owner or manager. Willard ended up with my grandfather's desk, so he's got that. Really. But anything else you like to add? 
I don't want to keep you here all night. <laughs> <laughs> Uptown, you know, where where our store was, right? you know, where Davalt's, where People's Drugs was, mm -hmm. there used to be a Pender store, a Pender's grocery store. My dad worked there on weekends. That has been discussed mm -hmm. on this history site I run. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with that. Mm -hmm. Well, would you like to add anything more or do you want to go home? <laughs> <laughs> You've had a hard day, I know. Well, I think to, you, to sum it all up, you know, it's uh, we've had a good customer base. God's blessed. We, you know, God, God has blessed us. We've had a good customer base and we've sold um, people come in here and, you know, they're pretty old. They says, I used to come in here when I was a child. <laughs> well. Would this be the oldest existing business here in Lenore now? You know, Bernhardt mm -hmm. Siegel's was for years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Would this be the oldest business in Lenore? Still well, started in 45. I don't know. I don't know either. I'll have to 45. find out about mm -hmm. that. Well, it's been great. Glad y'all could it do has. this. We appreciate you doing it. This is yeah, stuff I've wanted sure to do. have done and here for years. Okay, we'll shut it down then. <laughs>